<laughs> there it goes. Yeah. Okay, it's complete, guys. Okay. All right, so we start. Yeah, 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 and Tim. Okay. All right, guys, sorry for the uh, delay. Uh, we had a little difficulty with uh, technical difficulties, but uh, we're back on. And uh, hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Tony Pro Athletes of today and yesterday. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Welcome to our Thursday uh, evening conversation with our Tongue and Pro Athletes. But uh, before we start, can we ask if you uh, share uh, our conversation tonight with friends and family? And uh, we appreciate it if you do. Uh, also, if you have any questions, please uh, do comment and then we'll take the time to... Uh, to uh, answer your question and ask uh, Braden you know, the question that you comment on. So we, so everybody can have a turn uh, asking those questions. So, okay. Um, so thank you for tuning in. So, okay, our guest tonight is Braden Pejoko. He's an American football player for the Los Angeles Chargers, NFL. He played college football for LSU, Louisiana State University and it was part of the national championship last year, 2020. <clears throat> uh, Fialco signed with the Los Angeles Chargers as the undrafted free agent last year. Fialco made the team and uh, was signed to the, to the practice squad. Uh, he also uh, was uh, elevated to the uh, active roster for week 12 and 13 against the Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots. Uh, Fialco, uh, recently, just uh, resigned, re resigned with the uh, with the Chargers this year, and uh, big congratulations nice. to uh, to you, uh, Braden. Uh, you know we're all proud of you. I know that your parents are good friends of ours, uh, childhood uh, uh, friends, growing up in in in, in, in uh, Hawaii, and uh, we you know you're just like. Uh, a son to us anyway so as you know <laughs> we feel like that we uh we've been we've we've been on your journey with you this whole time <laughs> so but uh uh Braden, we are so excited and 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 honored to have you as our guest tonight and uh thank you for accepting our our invitation so um i just want to ask you to come in introduce yourself let us know who your parents are, your grandparents. Um, you know, uh, where do you, uh, you go? Let us know uh, about both of your parents, and we'll start with that. Well, let's start with that, and then uh, we'll, we'll we'll ask you. We'll go along and uh, give you more uh, questions. But thank right. you for uh, coming in, man. Appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Um, first and foremost, I appreciate you guys for for having me for the conversation tonight. My name is Braden Folco. I am, uh, you know, current Los Angeles Charger, uh, played at LSU for my college ball days. Um, I am of Tongan and Fijian bloodline. Uh, my father, Viliami uh, Fehoko, is uh, full Tongan. Uh, my grandmother, Cecilia Fehoko, was married to Tabitha Fehoko. Um, my grandmother is from, uh, uh, excuse me, my grandfather is from uh, Tuonuku in, in Tonga, and my grandmother is from... Uh, um, Vava'u, Tonga. And, uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> it, it had to cross my mind for a little bit. Uh, my mother is of Fijian uh, bloodline descent. Um, she, uh, her mother is uh, Clara Lee, uh, married to Sam Lee. Um, and they are from Suva, Fiji. And so um, just, a, just a Tongan Fijian athlete. Um, very blessed, very fortunate to be where I am, um, to come from great bloodline. Very proud to be a, to be a Polynesian. Very proud. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good nice. man. You know, very nice. Here's um. Let's 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 take back take you back to uh, to Hawaii. Going growing up in Hawaii, I know you had two uh, three older brothers uh, ahead of you. You're the youngest out of out of four, and uh, you guys were all uh, 
great football players. Mm -hmm. All had, you guys all had scholarship to, to, uh, to universities. And uh, just take us back of, of being the youngest. Well, well, how, how was it being the youngest out of four, four kids uh, growing up in Hawaii? Uh, you know, it's growing up as the youngest, um, I was very fortunate and very blessed to have three great older brothers who were leaders, mentors, and uh, just provided great guidance for me growing up, not just on the field for football, but off yeah. the field in life. And uh, it came from my father, you know, my, my father bring, being the father figure, the, the, the male in the household uh, who established dominance. He, uh, he always made sure that, you know, my brothers were, were going to set out a good path for me to follow. And just for all of us, um, following in their footsteps was tough because they <laughs> set the bar really high, uh, starting with my older brother, Whitley, then Sam followed it, then my brother, VJ. Uh, but they have been nothing but great great, great mentors for me. Um, I still keep in touch with them every day to nice. ask them for advice because, I mean, I'm never going to not know everything in life. You know, I'm always going to keep learning. I'm always going to fall short of, of whatever I need to accomplish, but that's why they're there. They're there to pick me up. They're there to help me going and, and keep moving forward. Nice, because you're always going to be the little brother, so, you know, they're going to... <laughs> <you're> gonna... <laughs> of course, of it course. It doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter how big you are, or, you know, playing in NFL, you're always going to be the little brother to them. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, but of course, you know, you know, you guys grew up with the uh, with the greatest mentor. I mean, he's the your father. I'm, I'm speaking about really... Really, the warrior is what he's known for in, in Hawaii, you know, and um, <clears throat> he himself, you know, I mean, you guys are buff as boys, but man, you take a look <laughs> at your, your dad's pictures back in the day, man, that yeah, boy was, you know, he was, he was something else. He was solid. <laughs> you know, don't, and, don't, uh, don't, hype him, don't hype him up too much now, you know he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> really, you owe me, bro, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, when your coach, LSU coach, was uh, introducing you, uh, I hear him mentioning, you know, how really it has inspired him. You know, every time he goes to Hawaii, he sees him. And then for you to to, to come up to LSU, tell us about that transition. Uh, um, he, um, it's he, it's very it's very tough, you know, because as a as a Hawaii boy, our island's so small. You know, um, it's very tough to transition all the way from Hawaii to down south because, you, yeah. you know, you grew up around Polynesians and and Tongans, Fijians, Samoans, Hawaiians. We're just a different type of people. You know, right. mm -hmm. I can I can go into it, my neighbor's house or you can, you know, we're playing on the street and and, you know, so and so's parents invite you in for dinner and you walk in without your shoes right. and auntie and uncle, and then you go to Louisiana, right? Where right. it's more family oriented, but it's very different in the way the, the dynamics are. You know, now you have to learn to adjust with different type of ethnicities and cultures. And now you have to, you're introduced to the Cajun culture. Now you're introduced to New Orleans and, yeah. and Baton Rouge and all these different type of cities where you know, like in Hawaii, we grew up, you know, even though I was Tongan, we'd always attend, you know, the Samoan flag day at Kihi Lagoon. You know, we go eat good food, um, enjoy the, the entertainment, the, the dancing, the, you know, just the camaraderie. But in Louisiana, we don't have that kind of stuff, but they have like Mardi Gras where people go and they party. They, you know, they do all that kind of stuff. They throw beads. So it's a different lifestyle that as a young athlete, I had to learn to adjust because in the NFL, right, you don't get to choose where you get to play. If you're if you're fortunate enough, if you're one of those elite level guys, you do get to choose. But for a guy like me, I got to learn to adjust and, and be comfortable with the circumstances I've given every time. So it, it was a very tough transition at first. All right. Liwati well, yeah. Lau uh, Jr. Uh, has a question for you, you know, which mm -hmm. kind of falls into place with this. How was your transition from college to the NFL as an undrafted, uh, undrafted rookie? It's tough. Um, it's not easy. You know, just being in the NFL alone is, is very tough. It's a it's a um, it's a gut wrenching job that, 
you know, it's one of those things where you consistently have to be on your, your P's and Q's every day. You have to be attentive to detail. Um, the transition itself was once you first get to get a grasp of how the league kind of uh, how the flow of the game goes, it kind of gets easier as the time goes on. Um, it's still not as easy as you would like it to be, but you know, you learn and, and you conquer and you overcome different challenges and obstacles and you continue to get better as time goes. You know, that um, getting into the NFL, we talked a little bit before we come on here, but being in the NFL, uh, we, you know, we, like we all had conversation with Bill and them. it's the big difference from going from college to the NFL. Everybody's good at the, in the NFL. Everybody's mm -hmm. there because the reason they got there because of some kind of reason they were good players but you know like mm. we talked before is that you know you have to yourself have to make make the best of it i mean you, mm. i mean it's tough it's a it's a tough road to get into but you, you if you figure it out and, and know how what to do with the nfl i mean you, you can have a good life in it but uh the other thing is i was going to ask is that you know your parents had a lot to do you know, the support that your parents had for you and your, mm. and your brothers was, was really, I mean, we could really see the support that they had for, for all of you. And they were willing to go anywhere, you know, to make, to, to give you guys that chance to, yes. to be able to, to, you know, to move forward with whatever that you guys were willing, you know, to go through to get it. So talk about that. Talk, talk about, how was that their, their support affected everything that all of you did? It's not just you, but your, 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 your other brothers too. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's huge. You know, when my parents show that type of sacrifice, right, for not just myself, but my brothers, um, you know, to pick up and move where we are, to take us to football camps at young ages, to – you know, find standby passes for us to fly to football camps. That stuff is the struggle. That stuff is, is sacrifice, you know? Right. Um, we didn't, I did, we, as, as a family, we didn't grow up um, fortunate to have a lot of money. So we had to make things work from time to time. And right. every time I see my parents sacrifice and do things out of the ordinary for my brothers, for myself, um, it was more motivation for myself, for my brothers to go get my degree, um, sure. not just playing the NFL where I'm at today, but have a better future and, a, and establish a foundation for my future family to come that I wasn't able to have as a kid. And that's what my parents were able to do by sacrificing for us. You know, they just wanted us to have yeah. a better future. Right. Yeah. You know, that is very true. Hey, uh, Fetch, did you want to chime in on with a question? Yeah, just for me, uh, Felco, um, what was the one thing that helped you? Where, let's take it back to where how we talk about, uh, how you talk about moving, had to move to different mm -hmm. uh, places every time. What was the one thing that helped you, uh, help you um, settle down at that place, whatever, wherever you go? Be comfortable right mm. now. Be comfortable right there or you no know, surrounding there. You know, that's a that's a really, really good question. I think having a successful counterpart, and for me, um, it's my girlfriend Hannah. We've been dating for six years now. Um, she's someone, you know, that she has been through my ups and downs. Uh, she's seen me on my lowest, she's seen me on my highest. And so being able to transition with her, um, being able to have her because don't get me wrong. It's, it's easy to, you know, just be like, Oh, I can get through things. I I'm tough. I can do this. I can do that. But we're, we're as humans, we, we need somebody to lean on from time to time. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'm away from my family. I mean, you know, my parents are, they're in the, they're in the same state. Sometimes they're in Hawaii. My brothers are in Hawaii and, and Utah, California. And so they're not a, they're not a drive away where I can just go over and go over for dinner and be like, Hey, you know, I'm going through this and this. You know, having my girlfriend and she keeps me grounded at times where, you know, we can talk, we can, you know, we can talk about issues going on. We can, she can hear me, you know, open up and, and give me advice. I think that really helps. And I noticed, 
you know, when I talk to a lot of the NFL veterans, the most successful ones are the family men, right? Because mm. they have good foundations. They, they come from households where it's stable. You know, they're able to talk when they need to. They're able to be given advice when they need to. And so that's, that's kind of helped the transition of moving back and forth is, is having her with me. She, she's been really supportive of that. You know that's that's really you hit it on the head though with with the with the support a lot of it you know because uh, you know I've been doing it myself too you know being I was mm-hmm. single through and going through there but like you said having a support system uh, when you need to talk when you need to to uh, release some you know some bad feelings about anything that the support is good to have there instead of being by yourself and trying trying to figure it out by yourself. Uh, you know, it can drive you crazy. So, uh, amen to that, though. But, um, you know, um, as, as, as um, you're the, is that the second generation, your father is the first generation uh, of an a- athlete, and you're the second generation um, going, you know, hopefully third and fourth generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you, uh, as, as, as a young man like you just made to the NFL and there's other, other kids that are looking up to you uh, coming up and, you know, especially our Polynesian kids. What is, what is it, some advice? Cause you've been through a lot too, cause you know, you've been yeah. through a lot and you, a lot, a lot of situations, but you still, you know, uh, figure it, figure out how to, how to overcome a lot of those situations mm-hmm. uh, with kids nowadays coming up, from high school going to college, what's your number one, what, what, what's your advice to them as going through college and sometimes it doesn't work out, you know, sometimes that, you know, you, when you get there, you're thinking that you're going to be the man and you don't know, want to <laughs> start playing, but what, what, what's your advice if some of these kids are going through those types of uh, situations? Man, you know, the biggest, the biggest advice I can give is to let life do what it's going to do. Um, I think as young athletes, especially ones that have, are, are extremely talented, who are, who are so eager to get into the, the spotlight really quick at a young age, we tend to try to take things that are out of our control from time to time man, you know, why am I not playing more than this guy? Why is this guy, you know, on the poster? Why am I not scoring, getting more touches on the football? Why am I not getting? And once you start worrying about things you can't control, that's when, yeah. you know, things of, of. You start thinking of some other you things. You start thinking that, of, yeah, yeah. You, you start <laughs> screwing up, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. And one thing I had to realize as a, as a young college athlete, and even this year, being a rookie, being undrafted, mm-hmm being cut and then being re-signed, like a lot of things, you know this as well, you can't control in the NFL no. or as in college. You can't control, you know, injuries, things that are bound to happen. You, you pray that they don't, but you just can't control. You can't control a coach being fired, all that stuff. Right. And so my, my biggest advice to especially young athletes is just continue to work hard and let life play out because – if you work hard, eventually you'll get your shot. And when you do get your shot, you have to take advantage of it. You have to take advantage of it, yep. That's just true. I mean, because a lot of kids do make it to college and, and, and expecting a whole different uh, way of them getting there, expecting a whole different situation and, uh, and it ends up a whole other situation. You mm-hmm. can't control, like you said, you can't control it. So, you know, I, if, if I may, last week, uh, B, we had uh, one of, well, it's not the most decorated tongue in NFL player in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, this guy came in in a different route, as you said. You know, he was drafted number 12 in his year, and, you know, he, he Immediately, he went into the limelight of the NFL. Mm-hmm. But in your case, you know, uh, we had Will Tukwafu here. Mm-hmm. In a similar situation, you know. Yeah. You're grinding <clears throat> and wanting to make the, the lead. Huh? 
to me, B, if I were to go into the league, I, I would rather take your route. Of course, we'd love to all go in the into the limelight right away. But you, your situation, I mean, I've watched you since you know when, since you were a little, little kid. And I have become one of your biggest fans. And, and <laughs> I'm still today, you know. I appreciate that. Thank you. And, you know, and I post about you and everything. And <laughs> just knowing how much sacrifice that you, not only you, but as your mom and dad and your brothers, you know, you, when you guys unite and just, man, there's that, um, you know, to me, mm -hmm. that, yeah. that's yeah. driving you, that is driving you today to make it to, you know. So be, man, tell us, in your own words, when you was coming out on that, uh, what do you call it, Tiger Wall, I guess? Huh? <laughs> And your brothers and your dad was doing the haka. Mm. And you turned around. It brought tears to my eyes. And I'm pretty sure every tongue in here, every Polynesian that watched that had tears in their eyes. Yeah. Because what you yeah. guys showed the world that day, mm. tell us, tell us in your words, how that felt. <laughs> you know, the first thing that came to mind was when I, I, I seen my brothers and I seen my dad. Um, if you notice when they start doing the haka, I didn't do it. I, I had to, I had to stop, man. And I had to just soak it all in for a second. Um, yeah. I teared up. I, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to cry because we had a, we had a football game to play, but <laughs> I, I was really emotional. And, and then I joined them, but the, you know, to see them do that and, and, and for me to take part of it, it makes me proud. Um, not just of my last name, but man, it makes me proud because I get to represent something that's bigger than myself. Um, I represent my, my heritage, my Tongan Fijian heritage. Uh, when people ask me about the Hakka, when people ask me about my, my dad, my brothers, it makes me proud because they want to learn more about my culture. They want to learn more about my family, my values. Oh. That makes me proud inside. And man, to, to see that kind of, it, it brought it brought chills you know and and still to this day people still talk about um you know i get fans that consistently hit me up random people that i don't even know from germany from switzerland man Braden, your your family really opened my eyes and and it's really motivating to see how well rounded you guys are how motivating you guys are as a family how tight knit you guys are and so man i i love it i love that the world got to see a little bit of what I'm about, what my family is about, and what my bloodline is, what my heritage is, and, and what we bring to the world. Yeah. You know, I've stood in some of those lines, you know, watching BYU go, go by all the time. <clears throat> I can just imagine, you know, here <laughs> in Utah, we know about, everybody knows about the Hakka, you know? Mm -hmm. I can just imagine Baton Rouge, Louisiana. <laughs> What the heck is going on? <laughs> you know? Hey, I after mean, that, after some that, of your everybody teammates, knows. <laughs> Some of your teammates was on the side. I mean, they were so excited. They they yeah. jumped around on the, yeah. on the side, you know? <laughs> I mean, but for you guys to, you know, to, to give the people of Baton Rouge and the college scene, you know, football scene of that day, man, it's something. But tell us, mm -hmm. um, B, I, I want to I wanna keep going with this. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. You know, because your dad, I've always heard versions of, you know, being explained about the Hakka and our city mm. you know. Mm. Man, but your dad's version on the interview after that, he told, man, I've never felt the spirit of the Hakka mm. or Sipi Tau until mm. your dad explained it that day, mm. you know, on the interview where he and your mom was on the... I guess on the TV and SEC network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. But you know, I like I said, I I've known about the Hakka and the Sipitao, man, but never fully grasped, mm. um, you know, of the culture that that came with mm. it. I mean, when your dad was telling it, I was like, oh man, <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could go and run around somewhere and get somebody. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyways, uh, B, I'll let uh, Fetch here know he's, he's uh, willing to ask another question. So go ahead, Fetch. Hmm. Oh, just for me, mate, uh, since it's your off-season, man, what type of training you're doing on the off-season? Do you do uh, just a normal training, like fitness-wise, or is it just hmm. the active recovery training? Oh, that's a that's a that's a really good question. I like that one. Um, you know, and I was just talking about it with Uncle Tim before this. In college, it's every every month is consistently hitting it hard, hitting it hard, hitting it hard, hitting it hard. Um, but in the NFL now, you, you know, we have more time on our hands, and so we have the uh, the opportunity to to go get um, soft tissue treatment. You know, like today I went to go get a massage. I did some dry needling, acupuncture, all that stuff. Uh, wow. It's tough. And so, you know, my training regimen will, it's its very different. So like, you know, for the off season now, I'm not going to go in and try to lift the house or, or try to go run a marathon. You know, I'm going to slowly work into it, lightweight, more reps, get my body going, get my body flowing, um, take advantage of getting in the jacuzzi, uh, ice bath, Epsom salt bath, um, and then eating right. I mean, uh, trust me, I, I'm, I'm, I take after my dad, so I, I want to eat everything in the house at times. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but, but eating is, is, is a huge part of the off season, uh, training program where, you know, I got to eat the right foods to help my body recover at night, but it's real different. Training is, is a lot more, uh, hands-on approach now in the NFL than it was in college. Big difference. Well, the, the, the training, uh, so just talk about uh, how important is the off season. Uh, it doesn't mean you you get to sit back and rest. Yeah. Talk about how important it is to stay active on your off season and still look after your body. Oh, it's it's huge, man. Because you know this is our job. You know our job is to stay in shape. Our job is to consistently remain at the top of your game. Um, and so having all this yeah. time on your hands doesn't mean you just have all this time where you just sit on the slack side off. and, and yeah, you slack off. No, having this time means do something you, yeah. uh, for yourself to be better every day than yeah. you were yesterday. Yeah. And so it's, it's, for me, it's an eye opener because now, you know, I, I, I'm always consistently looking to like stretch every night or, or try to drink another a bottle of water before I go to bed to hydrate. Um, it, it's very, very, very different. Yeah. So would you say the off-season program, uh, it, it's a must that, that you train, uh, that you stay in shape? Because I know, like you said mm -hmm. before, uh, during, during the season, it's, you, you hardly have any contact mm. you know, during the season. Um, because they want to save your body. They want to save you yeah. for the weekend, for, you know, for the game, because it's a short week. Mm -hmm. But uh, like you said, you know, going to off season, that, that's, I think that's the most important part of playing football is off season because, uh, you know, when you get, when you got to train, when you go into, to, uh, when you go into camp, you better be in shape, uh, you know, and then to give you time to heal your body. Plus, you know, you're not going to get hurt if you train hard enough to go, to go uh, when you go back into uh, doing a season. Mm -hmm. it, oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's also important to, that you do work and look after your body during the off season. It, you'll find it easier to you jump on uh, when you uh, arrive at camp. You find uh, camp easier, a lot easier yeah. uh, when you look after your body uh, before you go in. For those that think that they're just gonna walk in and into camp and and trying to uh, trying to get in shape and camp, they find it a lot harder to, <laughs> to waiting to get in there and get in shape than getting in shape before you go into camp. Well, you you know, better be in shape before you go to camp. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, I was just about to say that. <laughs> I, I was just about to say, like you know, if you gotta if you gotta show up to camp and and tell a coach like, hey. Uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna play myself into shape with these preseason games. I think you're gonna be meeting with the general manager uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the next day exactly. to, to get your release papers. Uh, you know, so <laughs> it's huge, man. You you gotta you gotta stay in shape as as much as I don't want to sometimes. Like, yeah. um, you know, go and and run a, a mile or something like that. I mean, 
I'll, I'll go swim some laps in the pool or um, go get on the bike or something, something where I'm consistently moving, staying active to where, you know, I don't, I don't yeah. take steps back in the off season. I'm always taking steps forward. So are you training with trainers? Um, uh, when you, when you're working out now, I mean, I know you're working out now uh, with uh, wherever you, in, in Texas. So are you, are you working with uh, personal trainers or coaches or, or, or was that recommended to you guys to go to this trainer? So and, where I'm training, and is that ahead. is that important to have trainers mm. to train you? You know, so now um, where I'm training at, I do have a personal trainer. Um, he's a he's a strength a certified strength coach, and he not only trains me, but he trains the other others like 40, 40 something NFL guys that work out. We all work out together at different oh, wow. times, different groups. Um, sure, but. I have a personal trainer, I mean, nutritionist, uh, a physical therapist, massage therapist, all that kind of stuff where, um, right. yeah, you, you pay money for it, but these are tools you need, you know, to succeed exactly. in this league. And to answer the second part of your question, I think it's 50, 50. Um, some guys, some of the veterans I talked to, some of them have been in the league so long where they kind of know it's, it's like showing up to a job you've been working for 40 years. You know, yeah. you know how it's going to go. Yeah, you you know. know how it's going to be. You know what to do. You know how to yeah. get your coworkers set up. And so yeah. those guys are, are more independent. Whereas a guy like myself, um, I like to be hands on. I like to know why I'm doing something. I like to know why I'm doing this lift or this type of running or or being, you mm -hmm. know, working this type of position movement. So um, when I eventually become a veteran and, and hopefully I can have a longer career, um, I may branch off to be more independent, but for now, I, I like working with my trainers and, and my support staff. Yeah, it's like uh, like the old players, you know, can't teach an old dog any new tricks. They already know about mm -hmm. it. So. Exactly. That, that, that's, that's the best way to put it. Bro, that's the yeah, best way to put it. That's the way these guys lift, yeah? yeah? I mean, what trainer can teach that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a Cliff uh, Kinahoi Tonga. With okay. a question here on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, great interview. Do you think more Italian kids in New Zealand, Australia, should try the Great Iron if the rugby league opportunity doesn't happen? Like a Jordan Milata. Even mm. for a scholarship to get a better... Uh, education. Yeah. yeah, education. Man, it. you know, I was talking to somebody about this the other day because... I don't know if you guys remember, but they did that that documentary on uh, Samoan athletes like right. Isaac Sapuanga, Pisa, Tinoi Samoa, yeah. Troy Polum, all those guys coming out from Samoa where they did a study where it was it was like Polynesians were producing like a gold mine for for athletes in the NFL. I without a doubt, if a, if a kid can have a chance, especially coming from New Zealand, Australia, um, another country, Samoa, Tonga to elevate their game and, and possibly take it to the next level. I think that's a, that's a gamble that they should willing to take 10 out of 10 times. You're, you're not going to get the opportunities like that to, to come by very often. And I think as Polynesian kids, as Polynesians ourselves, we're genetically gifted of just being bigger boned, stronger, yeah. thicker, thicker than the most. I mean, you look at not just football, but I mean, you look at guys like Mark Hunt, you know, UFC fighter, Steven Adams in the NBA. Guys are just a lot. Polynesians are built different. I think oh we're God. built to play sports. And I right. think if you can give Polynesians the um, the tools, and I think if you give them the right platform to elevate their game and take it to the next level, man, the sky's the limit for the young, yeah. the younger athletes coming up. Yeah, true. Uh, thanks, Cliff. Uh, and also to chime in on that, you know, most – uh, we've seen some of the great rugby players that have made the transition from the rugby to mm -hmm. the NFL. Uh, it, somehow did did didn't work out as well. Mm -hmm. the, the latest, I think, was the Fijian. Uh, what what's his name? Fitz Haynes. Huh? I think it was Jared Haynes. Jared Haynes, the running back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. It, I think they got to come in, you know, like what you uh, what you're saying, you know, during the gridiron, uh, Siwaki and uh, Chris Malanga is running. Eh? Bring them out in the in the younger age where they can make that transition young, you know, and and yeah. come up from there, you know, because I think when they come in during their 
illustrious careers in rugby, you know, it, it, and this is not just Haynes, you know, so many, it goes back all the way to this, to the seventies, I think when, uh, or eighties, uh, Christian Nicoya or something like that. Huh? It, yeah. it just didn't pan out mm -hmm. huh? uh, as, mm -hmm. as what they thought it would be. Huh? So, also got the from, uh, Buffalo Bill too, Wade from England. Mm. The running back. Here? Yeah. It's Buffalo Bill. Wow. You know, I, I, I think, uh, man, when I watch when I watch the the Polynesian rugby players like like uh, like you watch a player like Sarevi, you know, a legend in the uh -huh. rugby game. Yes, I think uh, I think he could have been a great running back in the NFL because a lot of the movements is very similar. You know, you look at a guy like Jared Haynes who was able to come in and, you know, the quick jump cut. All like I said, all it takes is is a is a few learning curves with these guys and getting yeah. them to understand how the game flows more than more than just the rules of it. Once they understand how the game flows, I think rugby players can pick it up like that, yeah. especially the transition of football, because rugby is a physical game itself. I mean, these guys are hitting each other without pads and, and protection. So I, I, I think they can they can really, you know, make a run for it if yeah. they wanted to. Yeah, I, my take on that uh, being uh, coming from the rugby, I think as a like a running back, He's gonna have a hard time playing in in the uh, in a league. Mm. If you bring in an offensive line, a defensive line, mm. I think they they would probably have a better chance of making the uh, the NFL because mm. you know they're they're on the line. Then uh, you know more, more technique. They can do technique uh, on the line. Mm. But I think as a uh, as a running back or or wide wide receiver guys, it's gonna take a little longer for them to to learn the system. But you know, like you said, they were, they're, they're, they're all athletics. You know, it's just like a little tweak here and there. They can learn uh, mm -hmm. how, to, how to play the game. But um, I mean, it's, a lot of times it's just, you know, you have to have the mindset to do it. You know, yeah. if you come in, mm -hmm. they have to do it. It's all about the mindset that you come in and if you, you know, if you want to do it, you're going to do it. So, mm -hmm. but uh, agreed. You touched on this uh, point before the interview, um, but Jeff uh, Amoni Tuha has uh, got a question within that. How important is it to pick the brains of the veterans, and how has that given you an edge? Oh, every day. Um, you know, we we talked about it before the before the interview started. How yes. important it is to be around veterans who know the game. Um, yes. I said it earlier. I said some veterans are very selective on who they want to pass down information to yeah. and respectfully. So, because I'm in a job field where the younger guys are always trying to take the older guy's job. That's just the name of the game. They're always going to find a younger, stronger, yeah. faster guy to come do your job and more cheaper. But once you become a trusted rookie where the veterans like you, and don't get me wrong, like I, I had to earn my respect. I, I had to, you know, I was consistently yeah. buying food for all the veteran guys. I was taking their pads in every day. I was wow. uh, anything. I mean, I one guy. I mean, I had to go take. I had to go take one of the veterans' cars to go get a wash, you know, on Friday. And so you you earn their respect by doing things yeah. like that. And and once you earn their respect, and you start realizing the things they teach you about the game, man, it's it's night and day. I think yeah. that's the biggest thing for a rookie is when you can get tight with a veteran and you can become trusted by him, pick his brain every day. Like right. I'm still calling all the older guys. Like, you know, this morning I talked to, you know, Linval Joseph, he's, he's the starter in front of me. Um, yeah. Asked him what he's doing, how his off season's going, you know, what he's eating right now. How's he approaching workouts? So it's good, man. I talk to the veterans every day. Nice. 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 You know, that's, that's the thing though. Like you said, when, when the veterans, trust you and like you they will yeah. hand down everything they know about your position and they're going mm -hmm. to give it to you and take you under their arms and 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 and, and give you the right information mm. but if they if they don't like you you know <laughs> it's gonna be a long it's, it's gonna a be long, a long season for you, long season for you. <laughs> uh, you because, go ahead go ahead no, I'm just saying because they're already set. These guys are already set. You know, they've been there for five, six years, seven years, and they already know their 
uh, their position and, you know, and then, like you said, every year somebody's coming to take your job. You know, mm. every year. Here's the thing, every year. They watch the draft. If they draft somebody in their position, they know somebody's coming in to, <laughs> to compete with them. Yeah. You know, you know they, they do watch the draft too because they know if, if they're drafting somebody in their position, you yeah. know, there's something, <laughs> they're coming oh, in yeah. to, <laughs> you know, they're coming in to take the job. You know, that's, oh, the, yeah. that's the whole thing. And, uh, and, if, and if you do come in and then they really like you, like you said, they're gonna hand. They're gonna give you everything that they know and teach you, mm-hmm. and teach you how to, uh, you know, to, to give you all their the what they have. So, mm-hmm. agreed. Well, like I said, <clears throat> this Liwaki Lao Lao Junior has another question, and it, it comes in in line with mine. Now that you've had a, a full season, uh, B, the question is how. <clears throat> Taking what you have learned this year, what you attack for this coming season? Ooh, I think for me is ooh, that's a that's a good one. Slowing down the game a little bit more for me, um, not relying on my talent every play, uh, trusting my technique. It, it's so hard as a rookie to uh, you know to be like oh. I can do it this way because you're so used to to winning like that in college. You know, in college, you can get away with with winning off of pure skill and talent. In the NFL, everybody's good. Everybody's got talent. You know, um, for me this year, approaching it, I want to be more of a technician in my game um, and then just relying on my strength, you know, because at the end of the day, these these old heads, these veterans, they're going to they're going to put themselves in position to win every play. And I got to be able to put myself in position to win too. So, yeah. and that comes down to, to technique and the small things. Yeah. Nice. You, um, is there any other uh, Polynesian on, on that team? We have uh, Sam Tevy from, uh, he, he's from Ulysses. Oh. He went to uh, the okay. University of Utah. So okay. Sam, Sam plays, uh, Sam is our left tackle. Oh, nice. Yes, uh, nice. Alex uh, Inoke has that question about Tevy. <clears throat> How is it playing with another tongue in Sam Tevi? Have you picked Sam, your brain? <laughs> <laughs> Sam is Sam is good, man. He's he's always inviting me over the house to to go eat some loy hosi and stuff, and and <laughs> uh, and I try to I, I try to I try to tell him, man, I, I stay away. I try to stay away from Polynesian food during the season because, man, it it's uh it's so easy to get Polynesian food out there in in, in California, and we yeah. also have another. We have uh, Alohi Gilman uh, from Koku. Uh, Alohi went to uh, oh, Koku High and yeah, then went to Notre Koku. Dame, and so you know right. Alohi's of Hawaiian descent. So right. um, there's three of us, three Polys on the team, and and nice. I hope we can get more. Oh, he was what Notre Dame guy. Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Man, I'm glad yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't even know Tevi was Tongan. Yeah, Ulis, 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 Texas. Okay. And well, for those of you wondering what Alohi Hawaii means, it's a delicacy of beef. And lobster and all that. So. <laughs> Rib, uh, ribeye steak and salmon. In, in, in okay. coconut milk. In coconut milk. In coconut. <laughs> and mayonnaise. And mayonnaise. And and this, 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 uh, from Chris Momolanga here, my former NFL himself. Uh, what prompted the transfer from Texas Tech to LSU? How do you feel about Apuica leaving LSU for Baylor? You touched on this earlier before the interview, but... I did. You know, when I left Texas Tech, I, I felt like I was missing a, a part of my game um, to elevate it, to take it to the next level. Okay. I I started every game. I was an All Big Twelve uh, freshman of the uh, freshman All American. I mean, you name it, I accomplished it. But I just wasn't elevating my game to the next level. And so for me, that was taking it to the SEC to play with LSU. Apu's situation is a lot different from mine. Um, we Apu as a freshman played really well, very very dominant dominant player as a freshman for us. Um, played played as a true freshman. We won a national championship that year. The following year, last year, LSU had a rough season, one of the roughest seasons in LSU history in like the past twenty yeah. years, I think, in eighteen years. Yeah. We had a new defensive coordinator, uh, new D line coach. Everything was brand new, and so 
as a young player, that is very tough to, like I said earlier about life, you know, letting life do it, do its thing, controlling it. It's very hard to control those circumstances where you have a new coach, you're wondering, you know, why this coach isn't playing me or why I don't fit the scheme. And I think Apple is going to do very well at Baylor. Um, he's there with our old defensive uh, defensive coordinator, Coach Aranda from LSU, who's the head coach there. Um, Apu's one of those guys. He's a he's a true nose guard. You know, he's 340 pounds. He's big. He's six four, and uh, he needs to be in a position where he can just play head up on the center. And that's what he's going to do at Baylor, and he's going to kill it this year. I'm excited for him. Oh wow! Thank you. Nice. Is that that? Yeah, is that the Tongan kid that came there right? from from Utah? Was he coming yeah. from Utah? Mm -hmm. He's a big kid, huh? Yep. Yeah, very big kid. Oh, <laughs> nice. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> thanks, Chris, for that question. I hope that answered it for you. And uh, he's got a Chris got a boy in um, in USC. That man, he's good. He's gonna make a wreck, and I, I hope he yeah. comes out this year. But you know, <laughs> to get back on that, uh, when you left Texas, uh, B. I actually thought you were going to go to the pros. I, I thought, man, you were outstanding over there. And I thought when you left, you know, that you were going to announce that you were going to go to the NFL. And I was hoping you would have. Do you think your stake would have been higher then? I I think did? after I, – I do, I do think after I left, I, I would have been a lot higher. Um, you know, my junior year – I was playing really well until I tore my bicep. Um, mm. My injury, having a having a season-ending injury really hurts. Um, it, it drops your stock. It, it, it kind of just resets you where you are. Um, but ev everything happens for a reason. I'm grateful to be where I am. I, I think without challenges, you don't become the person you are in life. And, uh, you know, you, you consistently, you never want life to be easy. I think you just grow stronger through the trials and tribulations you're dealt with. And you easily, uh, you continuously become stronger as they come, and and you know, like like I said, life never gets easier. You just grow stronger as as the as the trials come. You know, well, you had that. Uh, go, ahead, go ahead, Tim. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say that uh, you know, uh, your rookie uh, doing training camp, you had that uh, that show was following you around. Uh, what was that, that show? Hard Knocks. <laughs> Hard Knocks. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just just the uh, – just watching it and, and, and the, uh, the players were so excited about you uh, doing the haka and everything else, you know, doing the haka, doing, doing practice. As, as we watched that, I mean, these guys were just – they, you know, they were excited <laughs> for it, you yeah. know, just for you to doing that. And they were, they were trying to do it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> How was that feel? I mean, that had to make you feel, feel great. You know, these guys are, are, are looking at you and, 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 you know, they had to make you feel good, man. Just, just these guys cheering you on. Oh man. It, it makes, it, it gets me excited, you know, cause yeah. these, like I said, uh, you know, when I was at LSU, it, these guys want to learn about my culture, you know. They want to they want to know more about what Polynesians bring um, to them, and, and they want to know what it's like being a Polynesian, what we value, what we eat, um, you know. Because all they see and, and all they think about is Troy Polamalu or the Halotinatas of the NFL, and, and they don't really get a up close and and sensitive point of view from what it's really like to be around a Polynesian. So it, it's I'm so grateful to just continue yeah. to share my culture with these guys when i see them proud of yeah. of me doing the haka and they get excited man i get excited <laughs> about it too just telling yeah. them about it every time <laughs> yeah no I was just watching I, I watched that that clip and i was like hey look at these guys they're they're, they're, <laughs> they're ready to go man <laughs> they were you had, them, no, all, they were, you had sure. them go you had them all excited to go <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, but uh, Jeff uh, Amonituha has another question here. Uh, maybe you can help out in answering this too, Fetz. How do foreign rugby play sets view the American rugby as far as how far behind rugby is in the States? Do foreign players believe American rugby is far behind or catching up fast? 
talking about the players. Well, you was first, that for me? Uh, B. Sorry, yeah, for you, Fess. Braden, but uh, you go. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Fess. This is this is this is something you can touch up on more than me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bill, man. Sorry, Bill. Can you ask there again, please? Okay. How do foreign play, rugby play sets view the American rugby as far or as how far behind rugby is in the States? Do foreign players believe American rugby is far behind or catching up fast? Speaking of my Regarding the players. I was, uh, it will get better, but it, it is behind. But the, the good thing about it, we got a lot of poly here. The polys just make rugby look easy for everyone. Yeah. So, but outside outside of looking in, is it's 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 a long way to go. But oh, now I'm on the inside; they'll they'll get there. Mm. It's almost there. Now you have something to do with it. They're, they're, they're going to get there, right? No, on the yeah. job. No. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see, your fets, huh? Here in Utah. I mean, they have kids, I don't know, what, six years old? That's that's playing. Yeah, they have a little league rugby uh, here in, in, in Salt Lake, and I love it. Yeah, yeah, tag rugby. Hopefully someday, uh, Jeff, you know, that our, our kids will get up there. But, you know, the money of the NFL, man, will always chime in on everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's all about the money. So. Yeah. You know, the other thing is, is it's the, um, you know, these kids that don't make the NFL – like coming out of college, I mean, these kids have a chance to 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 play rugby. You know, maybe maybe going, maybe you know, uh, going somewhere and, and and train for to play rugby because they're still young. I mean, there's what 21, 22. Uh -huh. and uh, it's just a matter of redirecting their you know them to playing playing rugby. I, I think they they can pick up rugby easy enough to. To make it Bet, uh, play. Bet you, you, you played from, uh, I mean, with uh, some BYU and former NFL players, huh? Like Lasique? Yeah, Paul Lasique. Oh, the yeah. good thing is, the only difference is we've got to train the football players, one of the, mm -hmm. that they can, they're going to play attack and defense and at the same time. So we don't have the boy you're on defense. When you have the boy you're, you're on attack. Wow. And just, it's easy to learn, but it's an easy fix, to be honest. But then, like now, we got the NFL. Those players that don't make the NFL, we got the Major League Rugby nowadays. They yeah. don't go their route. Yeah. But then, it, going back to the question that being asked before, we can't compare a country that has been brought up with rugby, rugby's all their life. We can't compare them to, um, to the States because the States is all about football. So right now, because it's getting there, but it's, we just can't compare the the rugby world to the football uh, world. So, but it's, it's heading the right way out here, though, especially with the major uh, major league rugby. I didn't understand the thing he said, but I love the way he talks, man. So. <laughs> 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 Anyways, uh, back to football, uh, Braden. <laughs> this is from uh, Alex Inoke. Again, what do you say to youth football players and parents treating their high school decision? Mm. Treating their high school decision, making like making a choice for college. Does it matter where you play in high school, or is it what you do? on the field that matters anyway so mm, that's a good question you know uh i want to sit here and say it's always going to be it's about what you do that counts um because it is it, you always you got to be the one to produce on the field when it matters but i do believe in our day and age today with how big social media is right. it does it does help if a player goes to like a bigger high school um, you see all these high schools around the states, like a Bishop Gorman in Las Vegas or IMG Academy in Florida. They're starting to recruit these kids at a young age because those schools being on a bigger platform can offer kids more opportunities to, you know, 
um, be more exposed to the college scholarships and the college field and, and have all that type of um, advantage over kids who are in a small, say, 2A, 1A school or 3A school in Utah, like a, like a West High or, or, you know, one of those smaller schools. I, I think it, you have to, especially for the kids nowadays, it's a lot tougher it's it, the social media has, has really made it tough for kids to succeed nowadays. Um, back in my days, I didn't, I didn't have to tweet something to uh, announce where I'm going to go play. And it wasn't going to be as big nowadays. It's like, you have to do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like mandatory for the kids nowadays. And so I'm glad I'm not involved in it because it, it looks a lot more stressful than when I was in high school and stuff. Um, right. But I think the parents do have to, really look at both sides of, yeah, the kid has to go to a good school where they can give them more opportunities, but the kid also has to produce himself. Yes. Yes. It doesn't matter what the parents think. The kid has to mm. produce what he has to do to make it, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the parents can, can give him advice, but the kid is the one who has to step into that field and, 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 and make it happen. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we can we can give them all advice at all at, at all times, but um, the kid is the one who has to get in there and, and play the game and and make the, that decision of of what he wants to do. But you know, the, the support. But you know, parents are there to support whatever the kids uh, and uh, decide to do and and give them some advice. I mean, the parents parents. I mean, they're the one. That, you know, there has the kids and they. The, the, they need to give them some advice, but sometimes, sometimes they have to step to the side and give the kid a chance, you know, to uh, to develop and 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 hopefully the coach can help them develop their you know their game. But uh, you know, sometimes things happens, but but ultimately the kid has to make that decision. Yeah, you gotta let them fix for themselves. Yeah. They, yeah, they gotta make. Yeah, you have to go through all that that hard work, man. Well, I know Braden's parents didn't have that much of influence on his decision, huh? And I know he would have ended up at BYU if they did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, really, that was a knock, man. I know, I know you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we 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 got you, uh, Noke. Uh, he's saying that it was a great answer from UB. He's from Vegas, and that's why he's asking. Oh. <laughs> but uh, anyway, love you, Linda. Thank you for uh, all the support and uh, getting all the people in here. Huh? Anyways, uh, <clears throat> Tim, do you have any more questions? Let's let's go in two each, huh? and then we'll... we'll call it a day. Yeah. Okay. Well. Um... What is your plan now, uh, uh, B? I, I know I know you're working off season and uh, and uh, you're, you're you're getting in shape to to go back into uh, you know uh, the, when you when you go back to training. What's yeah. what's 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 what you're thinking of the the coming up season of you know you, what's your goal? What's your goal for the come coming up season? Man, I you know I want to I want to be able to step into a bigger role for the Chargers this year. Um, uh, my biggest goal for the season, season is to be a, be a more dependable teammate. Um, I want to be a teammate where they can depend on me more. Um, you know, as rookies, you know more than I do. It, it's not just off the field. You got to earn the respect, but on the field, you have to earn the respect as well. You have to show that you can play with the big dogs. Uh, one of my biggest goals this year is to show that I can take on more of a role as in I can be a leader amongst my peers, amongst my teammates. Um, even though I'm a younger guy, I want to show that I can incorporate um, things I did at LSU to help us win a national championship, you know, show leadership characteristics, uh, show these guys that, hey, even though I'm 24 years old, um, I can help lead this ship and, and we can take this thing to a Super Bowl, you know? Right. So that's one of my biggest goals is, is be, a, be a better teammate, be more dependable. Yeah, good attitude, man. That's, that's an awesome attitude about about it just you know being positive of what you do and i mean that's the whole whole idea is you got to set goals you know mm -hmm. uh i mean you, you you already made the team and then 
some, some, you know, you can't relax. You can't yeah. relax and just say to yourself, well, I already made the team and, uh, you know, I had that attitude too. Some, you know, when I made the team, I was like, man, I already made the team, you know, but that was the wrong attitude that you, I had that, you know, just because you made the team is not, that doesn't mean you, <laughs> you're going to play forever over there. You know, <laughs> play true. Forever in Very the NFL. true. So, but you know, it's, you got to have that goal in mind that you get better every year and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Good, good for you. Thank you. Let's. Man, you know how we uh, talk about you as a rookie, um, and with the rookie and the senior players. If when you become the senior players, what would you would you treat the rookie the same way that the senior players? <laughs> Of course, <laughs> you gotta hand it man, down, it, man. You gotta hand it down. Yeah, it's, man, it's a, you, you it's have friends. to. Right? Yeah, I'm when I when I get to that when I get to that uh, moment and and put my years in, I'm gonna make sure these guys are bringing in donuts every Friday. So, <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, or or some loy hosi. Either way, somebody's gonna be bringing in some food on Friday. <laughs> It's a tradition, man. It's a tradition. You gotta, oh, big you know, tradition. I, big yeah. tradition. It's not, it's not a bad tradition, but, you know, mm-hmm. they just make the rookies go out there and spend their money, bring bring them food and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad it hasn't. I'm glad it's, it's been going on since, since you were playing because, yeah. you know, well, sometimes I'm like, I, I look at some of the vets when they ask me to do stuff and I'm like, man, really? Like, you know, I, I just bought, like, you know, two hundred, three hundred dollars worth of snacks for the room yeah. like three days ago, and all the snacks in the fridge are gone. So it's like, man, where does all the food go, man? Like, yeah. so they're like, hey, man, we need yeah. some more. Go get some. So, all right. <laughs> hey, you already went through it. You're done, right? <laughs> done, done. Yeah. Now they're gonna. Now yeah. I get to call, hopefully call some shots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you can do what Chris Malonga did, huh? I'm the toughest guy and <laughs> I beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll have the respect. <laughs> but, uh, that's what that's one way of doing it. <laughs> the, uh, this journey has been a long one. <clears throat> and I know you're enjoying life, but at the same time, you know, you're grinding. I can't wait. This is not a question. This is just me being real. I can't wait until you are the person that you want to be. Because I know, like I said, you know, from your Texas Tech days, I you probably don't want to talk about it. But to me, I by far, that was your, the years that you should have came out. But you did go to LSU and, and win a championship and gave the people of Baton Rouge. Man, I can't believe some of them are coming in here, you know, and just um, commenting on, on you and how much they miss you and how much, you know. For your parents, you know, I, re- I heard Paolo uh, Pilata saying that both parents passed before he came out to the NFL. Mm-hmm. He got the big money. It was a dream of his to pay off their bills and make them free of their mind. Do you have that goal with your parents? Of course. You know, like I, I talked about earlier, I've I seen them sacrifice so much for me. Um, I think it should it should be every kid's goal, no matter if you're playing football or if you're an athlete or not. I think our goal one day is to always take care of our parents. Because, um, you know, I, I wish to be half the man – you know, my father is and, and was and and the things he did for us growing up. You know, I, I wish I could to give back everything I can right now. And so that's my goal. And I, I want to be able to take care of them and, and not have them worry about a single uh, penny or dime of, of where their bills are going to have to be paid for next. And um, I think that's just a, a, as humans, we, we should all strive to do that is take care of our parents, you know, because they give they've given me everything they possibly could and more. And so there's no way or any amount of money I could do to repay them for that. True. Very true. Yeah. You know, they, they sacrifice a lot for, 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 every, you know, all, any kid, the parents will be sacrificed. you know, but, you know, for us to, uh, 
you know, we see, we see, we saw it, you know, we, mm-hmm. we, your parents, you know, going places and traveling and going to where you went to school, they followed you and support mm-hmm. you. I mean, not just you and your, and your brothers too, but, um, you know, for any parents that does that, meaning that, you know, they want their son to do, have a better life than they have, you know, to, to uh, give you the opportunity to, to make that life happen for, for you and, 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 and be a better person. So uh, kudos to you, man. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Bill, you want to close it out? Well, we'll give the, uh, Braden here the, the chance to say his piece and whatever to his fans out there. And, yeah. and then I'll go ahead and close it. Huh? Man, you wanna, I just, wanna, yeah. Go ahead, man. Oh, no, I just, I just want to thank you guys for, for having me on tonight. Um, such a blessing, such honor. Um, you know, thank you guys for helping pave the way for young Polynesian athletes like myself. Um, being able to build our foundations more. Um, I think it's huge. I think the Polynesian community, our voices need to be heard more. I think our stories need to be told. And I think uh, we're a very special group of uh, of people who who can make a change in this world. And I think, you know, coming on here and and just being able to talk like this and have deep conversations are are very, very great um, for our community. And, And I appreciate you guys for you know, allowing me to share that with you guys and, and just for everybody listening, thank you guys for always supporting. Um, it's been a long journey and, and I'm still going, still planning to continue to work hard and, and just represent everybody that's come before me and everybody that'll come after me. Nice. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Kim or Fetch, do you have anything else or? No, I just, you know, best of luck this coming up season, uh, Brandon. You know, we'll we'll be watching. We'll be supported. Uh, you know, after this COVID, maybe we. Um, I'm in here. I'm in California, so maybe uh, if I get a chance to come watch you, you know, we'll come up there and watch you play. But uh, good luck this season. For good sure. luck on your off season. Uh, you know, and uh, stay safe. And we'll we'll be talking. Just for me, mate. Thank you for uh, taking the time to say your story with us in our group. Uh, uh, mean a lot to us and hopefully it helped those who uh, have kids that are uh, inspire the, those people that, and kids, the youth that are coming up right now yes. and their dream to make the, the NFL and wish you all the best mate uh, uh, keep up the good work and uh, keep doing for the, we'll keep you in our prayers and uh, all the best thank for the you. future yeah. thank, thank you. you, thank you guys you know, hopefully we can talk to Sam someday. Sam, his brother, his older brother, uh, was a member of the Philadelphia Eagles eh, for a while. So hopefully we can talk to Sam. But uh, Braden, thank you so much for giving us the time. It's been an honor. And I hope this is in, it's not the, the last. Huh? Um, for sure. First of many. You know, we're going to check in on you, on your, uh, on your, throughout your career. And uh, you know, like Tim says, man, California is not even that far. We'll, we'll be there and watch your games. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> know that we love you guys. Willie, Linda, all the boys, huh? Whit, Sam, and uh, BJ, love you guys. We'll talk to you guys later. Baton Rouge, Chaka, yay. <laughs> hang loose, hang loose. <laughs> okay. Love you, guys. you guys. Love you guys. Malo, eh? Malo. Yep. Go ahead and take off, take us off the Facebook, Tim. Yeah, uh, you can just turn off the record. You you got the oh, am I the one? Just leave.